No workers, no lights, no rest. Somewhere right now, while the rest of the world argued about trade wars, tariffs, and politics, machines are building cars in total darkness, operating nonstop, reshaping global manufacturing, and changing everything we thought we knew about industrial power. And most people don't even know it's happening. Across China, a new kind of factory is already running. Lights dimmed. Human presence minimal. Machines moving with perfect coordination. These facilities are called dark factories, and they may be the real secret behind China's explosive rise in electric vehicles. Today, we are going inside these silent production lines to uncover how China is using hyper-automation to rewrite the rules of global manufacturing and why the rest of the world is watching with growing concern. Welcome to Dragon EE Rev Hub. Let's dive into it. What is a dark factory? A dark factory is not science fiction. It is a manufacturing environment so automated that it can operate with little to no human presence. Robots handle welding, painting, assembly, inspection, and logistics. Artificial intelligence coordinates movements down to milliseconds. Machine vision systems detect flaws invisible to the human eye. In theory, these factories don't even need lighting, because machines don't need to see. No lunch breaks, no shift changes, no fatigue. Production continues 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. What once required thousands of workers now runs silently, efficiently, relentlessly. And nowhere on earth has embraced this model faster than China. For decades, China earned its reputation as the world's factory through one defining advantage, cheap labor. Global companies moved production to China because wages were low and labor was abundant. But that era is ending. Over the past decade, labor costs in China have risen sharply, faster than many Western analysts predicted. For manufacturers, the economics became unavoidable. If wages go up, profit margins shrink. If margins shrink, competitiveness disappears. Automation became the solution. Robots don't ask for raises. They don't strike. They don't slow down. As robotics, artificial intelligence, and machine vision matured, China moved faster than any other nation to deploy these technologies at scale. This wasn't just about efficiency. It was about survival in a changing global economy. Hyper-automation doesn't just reduce costs. It radically increases speed. In traditional factories, production is limited by human endurance. Shifts must change. Errors accumulate. Fatigue sets in. Dark factories remove those limits. Robots work with identical precision at 3 in the morning as they do at 3 in the afternoon. Production cycles shrink. Output multiplies. This is why Chinese electric vehicle manufacturers have been able to scale at a pace that legacy automakers struggle to comprehend. Factories that once took decades to optimize now reach full capacity in just a few years. Speed is no longer an advantage. It is a weapon. China's newest EV manufacturers were born into automation. Unlike legacy automakers that evolved gradually, these companies built factories from scratch, designed around robots, not people. Entire assembly lines are choreographed like precision machinery. Robotic arms move in synchronized patterns. Vehicles glide through production without ever stopping. Human workers still exist, but they are no longer central. They monitor systems, maintain machines, handle only the tasks automation cannot yet master. This model allows new manufacturers to reach massive production volumes in record time. What once took decades now takes years. This transformation didn't happen by accident. It was guided by national policy. 
In the mid-2000s, China launched an ambitious industrial strategy designed to move the country from low-cost manufacturing to high-tech dominance. Robotics, automation, and advanced manufacturing became national priorities. Factories weren't just upgraded, they were reimagined. Since then, China has become the largest installer of industrial robots on Earth. Nearly half of all new industrial robots now operate inside Chinese factories. The goal was clear. Control production, control supply chains, and control the future of manufacturing. China's dark factories solved one problem. They made production faster, cheaper, and scalable. But they created another problem, one with global consequences. Overproduction. When factories never slow down, supply can grow faster than demand. And in China's electric vehicle industry, that imbalance is becoming impossible to ignore. China now produces more electric vehicles than the rest of the world combined. Assembly lines run continuously. Storage lots fill with finished cars. Production continues, even when sales hesitate. In traditional manufacturing, human labor acts as a natural limiter. Automation removes that limiter. Robots don't care about inventory levels. They don't respond to market signals. They only follow instructions. And those instructions say, keep producing. Kiao to automakers in the United States and Europe, China's EV machine represents more than competition. It represents a pricing collapse. If millions of low-cost Chinese EVs enter global markets, prices fall. Margins disappear. Legacy automakers, already struggling with high battery costs, strict labor laws, and slow charging infrastructure rollouts, face an existential threat. This is why governments are stepping in. Tariffs, investigations, restrictions, not because Chinese EVs are inferior, but because they are too competitive. One of China's greatest advantages is rarely discussed openly. Labor regulation. China faces far fewer constraints when automating factories. There are no powerful auto unions negotiating limits on robot adoption. No prolonged legal battles slowing technological upgrades. Automation moves fast and without resistance. In Western economies, automation is debated. In China, it is policy. Even countries with friendly ties to China are cautious. Developing markets want affordable electric vehicles, but they also fear what happens when domestic industries are wiped out. Cheap imports can accelerate electrification, but they can also destroy local manufacturing. This puts governments in an impossible position. Accept Chinese EVs and risk domestic collapse or block them and delay electrification. Dark factories don't negotiate these trade-offs. They only optimize for output. For now, China absorbs much of its EV production internally. Manufacturers are betting on a massive middle class, rapid urbanization, and aggressive government electrification policies. They believe domestic demand will catch up. But if it doesn't, the pressure to export will only increase, and global resistance will intensify. China's dark factories don't pause for politics. They don't care about borders. They don't respond to tariffs. They only do one thing. They produce. The real question is no longer whether China can dominate electric vehicle manufacturing. It's whether the rest of the world can adapt fast enough to survive a future built in darkness by machines that never sleep. Want more deep dives into the EV technologies reshaping the world? Make sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned. See you in the next one.